Good morning. Nice, nice to see everyone this morning. What a pleasure it is to, to be in the house of the Lord. You know, the scripture says in Matthew 21, verse 13, and it says, My house shall be called a house of prayer. And I don't know about you, but I, I'm a firm believer in prayer. I, there's no greater thing than to, to approach our Lord and Savior with prayer. So uh, I'm thankful for that. Uh, today, uh, we'd like to uh, remember uh, everyone that's on, sick and on our prayer list. It's so good to see some of our sick back with us today. Larry, good to see you and Judy and, and Raymond and all the others. Good to see you today. And it's through God's grace and through prayer that brought, brought you here and brought all of us here today. Look, I'm thankful for that. Uh, Mike, would you uh, lead us in prayer, please? Our most gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us here today to hear your word that the Lord has, has placed on Mike Kent's heart to be able to pass on to us to help guide us and direct us in the way we are our daily journey goes be with the pastor and as his family is out on vacation and be safe travels for them and everybody else out on the road be with the military as they are visiting other countries and protecting the needs for for us and everybody else in the world in your name we pray amen as far as coming announcements for the coming week, I haven't, haven't been given any, so, but we would like to continue to pray for our upcoming revival, pray for the speaker, and pray for hearts to be uh, open to, to the flames of revival. So please remember our revival. Also remember the Awana program. Uh, that kicked off last week, so... Be in prayer for them and the youth of our church. We, we definitely need them. So moving right along, uh, our first hymn this morning is going to be hymn number 746, He Keeps Me Singing. We'll sing verses 1, 2, 4, and 5. <laughs>
Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Uh, our second hymn is hymn 330. We'll sing, Are You Washed in the Blood? Verses 1, 2, and 4.
193, verses 1 and 3. God is good. to come and bring the message today. So come as you see fit, Brother Mike.
Good morning. morning. Welcome, everybody. Uh, Before we get started, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we just lift your name up, give you honor, praise, and glory. Anything we do and say is to glorify you and give you all the power and the glory. Have your will in your way with me. Speak through me in spite of me. Give me the words to say that will not come back void, that will water our land and feed thy saints. Forgive us for our sins and our shortcomings. Lift up all the sick, the hurting, and the lost. As we begin today at 11, we opened with announcements and prayers. We sang songs and Let our minds and our hearts be open to the gospel, to God's word, that we can receive, meditate, and go out and spread God's word. We ask all this in the name of Jesus. We love you, Lord. Amen and amen. I would like to speak on three things you can't do without. This is according to the Bible. Three things You cannot do without. The first one is Hebrews 9.22. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. Jesus' sacrifice on the cross for all of us, for forgiven sins. You ever lay down at night and think about how much it cost God to forgive your sins? Sometimes I, when I lay down, I think about what I've done that particular day. Probably wasn't too pleasing to God, but and yet, he loves me still, yet by what I do, or what I have done, or how I, what I will do. What sacrifice he had. In the Old Testament, or at the beginning of the Bible, it talked about the first sacrifice. We've heard it so many times of Adam and Eve when they, when they sinned. But in to order to get back in God's graces, death had to occur. God, he went out and slay, slew some animals so he could provide protection or covering for Adam and Eve so they would get back with God. Then Adam and Eve had their first sons, Cain and Abel, and we have another death. But Cain, he brought an offering for God that wasn't acceptable. Abel, he bought a sacrifice to God that was acceptable because it had blood in it. We just sang a song earlier about the blood or we washed in the blood. I often think about how did Abel know about how he worshiped, how you're supposed to worship, how he knew that he was supposed to bring a sacrifice with blood, with the life within the lamb. Did Cain go against God and brought his own substitute because that's the way he wanted to do it. He didn't want to do it the way God wanted it and he was unacceptable. Cain got mad and killed Abel. Abel still speaks from the grave today about this great sacrifice. Then we have more sacrifices. We have the Passover. Brother Scott has preached it. He has told it so many times in Exodus about the Passover, about how it's performed. We all know that. Sacrifice after sacrifice after sacrifice in the Old Testament. It was a covering of sin, not a cleansing. Only one individual, only one person. Only one man 
Only one lamb could take away the sin of the world. And that was precious Jesus that we have. Only him. The old sacrifice, it covered the new sacrifice, it cleansed. It cleansed the conscience of man. Not a covering, but a cleansing. Only one sacrifice was needed. And that sacrifice, the death, not the life. The life of Jesus was a tremendous statement, but only the death brought us back in from the separation to God and man, only the death. The precious blood that was shed for each and every one of us to get us back into the right, right relationship to God. I remember the first time that I gave blood. I was in the military. I didn't realize what it was. They gave me a three-day pass and give me a ticket to go bowling. Since then, that's in, that was in 72. Since then, I have give, I can't tell you how many times. Sister Gwyneth, she would always, I'd see her sometimes when I gave blood. I think maybe she gave more than I did. And I gave a tremendous amount. We have five quarts in our system. It cleans us. It cleans out the garbage. It goes through us, I don't know, in so many seconds. It cleanses us. But only Jesus can cleanse us from that sin. Like I told you earlier, when I lay down at night, I think about the forgiveness, what it cost. Over in, uh, see if I can find it. In 1 Peter, it reads, For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver and gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life, handing down to you from your forefathers, out with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. It cost him everything, the Son of God. In Job it says, though he slay me, this is Job 13, 15, 13, 15. though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Then we have the word atonement. Atonement is removing the effects of sin from the repentant sinner and allowing him and her to be reconciled to God. Only Jesus, only one capable of carrying out atonement for all mankind. He was a substitute. The precious blood, the ransom. But you know the main thing, I thank God, for is when he's on the cross with his arms stretched out wide not so much the forgiveness of sin is the brotherly love that he has for each and every one of us he's saying on the cross I love you I love you I love you isn't that good There was, a tent, there was an evangelist that, was, that had a tent meeting. The tent meeting was over. He was pulling up the tent pegs. While he was doing this, a young man come up to him and asked him, he said, what do I have to do to be saved? And he said, you're too late. And the young man said, wow. Wow. Why? Because the services are over? He said, no. He said, it's all about, already been done for you. Everything has been paid for. Everything is done. Then he commenced to talking to him, witnessing to him, and he was saved. Isn't it good that we have 
a Savior that we can come to each and every day. We've heard Brother Scott talk about the, how we come in contact, how we can go into the Holy of Holies, how we can meet God, how we can talk to Jesus anytime and anywhere we want to because he's paid the price. So easy, but and yet it costs so much. We don't have to do a thing, not one thing. All we have to do is just believe and receive and become a saved individual. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. Second thing that we need to do is Hebrews 11.6. It reads, without faith, it is impossible to please him. Hebrews 11.6. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. God has did his part on the cross. Now it's our turn to do our part. We have to have faith. What is faith? How do we require this faith? I wish I could explain it to you. 11.1 uh, will give you the definition. But I have believing and receiving what has been revealed through God's word. That's what I say faith is. The knowledge of God. A completely personal trust and the obedience to his word. By grace, we are saved through faith. Faith without works is dead, being by itself. It is not saving faith. Romans 5.1. Romans 5.1. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. A total dependence on God. I talked about Cain and Abel earlier. But Abel is a type of faith that is worshiping. That's what that portrays. Right after Abel, we have the patriarch Enoch. Or the man that walked with God. And that is a type of faith that it pleased God. And I, like I said earlier, without faith, it's impossible to please him. Enoch pleased God. He walked with God so many years. But and yet, he didn't die. God took him up with, took him home with him. Walked with him one day, and he told him he was too far from his own house to come on and go home with him. And he went. He went home with God. And it pleased God by his faith. It's a command. It's a command that God gives to believe, to believe, to believe on God, and thou shalt be saved. God does not want anyone to perish, but everyone to come to the saving knowledge of God and Jesus. If we seek him, we will find him, and he will reward us. Have faith in God. And like I said earlier, it's a command to believe. This faith is impossible to give a more definition than what it really is. We have to have faith, something unseen, the evidence is not seen, something that we hope for. Like I said earlier, to have faith is to, and to be saved is one day we will have the answers to the promises. We will see the answer to the promises in heaven. We're probably, I am, probably a lot closer than I used to be of my age to seeing heaven come about. But heaven is just like faith. It's hard to explain. We just have to have faith to know that we will see our loved ones again one day. If we act on faith, if we believe faith, we realize what Jesus has done for us. 
that saving faith that we have. Third thing, and I think I really, the 15th chapter of John is one of the most important chapters in the whole New Testament. Might be on the whole Bible. It talks about the vine and the branches. Jesus being the vine and us being the branches. John 15, 5, without me, without me, you can do nothing without me. Apart from me, you can do nothing. The vine, we have to be attached to the vine. And then it goes on to talk about fruit bearing. Yesterday at my uh, Mary's sister's next door, we have a, not an arbor, I guess. I guess you could call it an arbor. Anyway, we had grapevines, scubby dines and musky dines, and I went over to see how many grapes we had. I really pruned, trimmed back during the winter. That's when you prune grapes, during January and December. I had a few grapes, but not as many as I thought. I give evidently I pruned them back too much. But they will come back next year, I am sure. Fruit bearing. John talks about there are two types of branches. One that bears fruit and one does not. What kind of fruit is John talking about here? How do you get this fruit? Fruit is fruit of the Spirit. Love. Joy, peace, long-suffering, patience, self-control. That's one type of fruit. Jesus also is talking about, or John, out of John, Jesus is talking about another kind of fruit and is witnessing. Soul-saving. Have we witnessed this week? Is our life been a witness? The sanctification or being sanctified, are we different? That God can see something in us, or people can see something in us, that we belong to God. On through the chapter in John 15, it talks about love. We love to have joy, but love is more important. It trumps joy. It's in the front of it. Joy, peace and faith, but, and love. God is talking about the love that abounds in us if we abide in him. It talks about his heart, how we can reach to his heart. There are many ways that we can love God and love Jesus. Only through the Spirit, through, only through the Holy Spirit to come and dwells within us through us and in us, we can speak God's word. We can testify. We can have this love for our friends and our brothers and sisters in Christ. Only through him, only if we abide in him, we need to be attached to the vine. It talks about the branches that have gone dead. When I prune that branches back in the winter, you can't tell which one was dead or which one was alive. They all looked alike. That's just like us within our church. All of us look like we're Christians. We look like we belong to God. But God says only the fruits. If you bear fruit, much fruit and more fruit, My personal opinion, this is just me, that he says he will separate these branches. But faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. How can we be separated and hear, words, hear God's word? We have to be attached. We have to come in the assembly of God and listen to him speak to us. It's just like the songs we sing. Do we listen? Do you remember what I said at the beginning, in the middle or at the end? 
What attracts you the most when Brother Scott preaches? Is it the beginning, the middle, or the end? Why I say this, all of us is important. All of us need, we need to pay closer attention so we can bear this fruit that God has given us. If you haven't read 15th chapter lately, you ought to take time to read it. It really, it really will speak to you and meditate on it. Look to God for answers that you have in your life. All of us have a story. All of us have bumps in the road. All of us have rain in our lives. If not, it's coming. You're either coming in a storm, going out of a storm, or you're in the storm. Life is life. Is life. I just heard Brother Raymond said, that's life. Life will creep up on you. We have sin in our life. I've heard Adrian Rogers say, if you're not sinning every day, I mean, if you're not doing God's work every day, you're sinning. Sin will take you as far as you want to go, keep you long as you want to stay, and cost you more than you can pay. We all have sin in our life, but God wants the fruit. He wants the character to show in our lives, this love, this joy, this peace. Only God can give the peace. Only God can give the real peace when we see him in the final times. When heaven comes down to the new Jerusalem, the new earth, that's when the real peace will come. Won't that be something? No more crying, no more suffering, no more robberies. Oh, man, that'll be something. I guess the, the, uh, the networks, they won't know what to talk about. Everything will be good. Good news does not sell. Only in, only in the Christian life. Only in our testimony. Only in our witnessing. But we have to be in him. In him. In him, I could love somebody that doesn't love me. In him, I could pray for that person. I could love that person. I might not like him, but I could love him. In him, when we are attached to him, when we abide in him, we can do the things that we cannot do without the Spirit living within us. Amen? Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without me, you can do nothing. This is scriptural. This is the Bible. This is not Mike. This is what the, the Bible reads. All these three things. If God is stirring in your heart today, today could be the day of salvation for you. If you have gone astray from God, this is the day to come back. He is your Savior, and he is also your Lord. But he is Lord of your lips. He's Lord of your ears. He's Lord of your eyes. He's Lord of your pocketbook. He's Lord of your bank account. He's Lord over everything. That's what Lord means. He is over everything in your life. That's what God is. He's looking to you to come to him and abide in him so you can be a strong witness, ambassador, a brighter light for him. Amen? We usually have invitation song. I think it is. What, Brother Nathan? 391. 391, sweet, sweet spirit. But before they begin to play, if God is speaking to you, I am not the pastor. I'm just an individual. 
I'm just so thankful. I have the opportunity to come up and speak God's word. It's a, it's a pleasure. I enjoy it. I enjoy reading the scripture and studying it. But that's me. That's me. If you don't read, that's why you come, so you can hear the word spoken. But don't take a chance. Don't let the day go by. God is speaking to you. The altar is open. You can come to God right here and speak to him. Then you can speak to Brother Scott when he comes back. Don't let the day go by. You never, what, you never know what's promised for tomorrow. We're just all a breath away from eternity. That's, that's pretty short. That's pretty short. An invitation. You know, some churches, they, they go years. <laughs> that's, it's unbelievable. Without an invitation. But that's them, not us. I like it when pastor says about the invitation. You never know how God is speaking. I like when minister says, when heads are bowed, eyes are closed, nobody moving, the spirit is talking to someone, is opening somebody's heart. That's solid. The standards that are outside of our church are no ways like they were years and years ago when I was a boy. Standards have gone down, but not God's. God's standards will never go down. It will always remain the same. And we will never get where we need to go by compromising the standards that God has offered us spoken to us, preached to us. We pray to him that we can change, but we have to step out. God is looking at you. God will choose you. God has chosen you, but we have to step out in faith, and we need to have that faith so we can step out. You can do it right in the pew. You can ask God to come into your heart and forgive us for your sins and turn around and come to him and love him and it will please him and it will honor him and it will give him glory and they will have a parade in heaven for you that another sinner has came to become a saint with God's angels and the people have gone on before us thank you
cup of the benediction. Lord, we just thank you for that we are able to come and worship and praise your holy and precious name today. Guide us and be with us as we go beyond this place until the next appointed time. Have your will in your way with each and every one of us. May we go out and be a brighter light for you and a better witness. Let us bear our fruits that was within us. Our character would expand. We love you and we praise you. Go with us. And the ones that are not present, the ones that are shut-ins, hospitals and nursing homes, that we can lift all of those up, our members and our friends. We love you, Lord. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.